it going everyone? My name is Adam and welcome to Driven Nashville. We do our best to produce enthusiast driven car and truck content and today we're featuring this amazing 1996 Hummer H1. Now AM General won a contract, it was a billion dollar contract back in the early 90s, late 18, 1980s to essentially produce a new military vehicle that they dubbed the Humvee. And the Humvee, you know, was in Operation Desert Storm and ultimately featured now in over 30 movies. So there's no doubt about it, the Hummer is an, it's like an icon. It's like American popular culture icon. And you still see them rolling around from time to time, but I gotta say they're getting rarer and rarer. They only produced about 11,000 of these for the civilian market. So you have to understand that this isn't, they didn't mass, mass produce these. And as far as a cool factor, well, I don't really think you're gonna get much better uh, than the Hummer. Uh, it's, you know, I'll give you an example. My four-year-old son, he, he's pretty much already told me, Dad, you can't sell this. You know, he just thinks it's the coolest thing ever. Uh, but we'll see about that. Uh, so I just also want to say, you know, in the 90s, this was a really interesting it vehicle, kind of an eye of a ride vehicle. I mean, a lot of famous people drove this vehicle. We're talking Coolio, Tom Clancy, Ted Turner, Andre Agassi, and of course, the famous Arnold Schwarzenegger and the reason why the Humvee was produced as a civilian vehicle was frankly because Arnold loved it so much that that's the reason. So again, it's just part of American popular culture at this point. So back in 1996 when this vehicle came out, it was about $61,387 MSRP. That's for the wagon version, which this is. So just so you guys know, inflation adjusted, that's $109,000. So this is not a cheap vehicle even back then. Um, now, today these can range in price from about $20,000 for the military version if you go to an auction. Um, that's, you know, and I would strongly encourage you not to go that route because unless you want just an awesome 4x4 vehicle, you're probably going to want to stick with one of the civilian versions. Uh, now, they also go up to a quarter of a million dollars and even higher than that if you were to buy one that say has the Duramax uh, swapped with the Allison transmission and it's had full on everything else paint and everything else redone. There's a company in uh, California called Predator Inc. I'll go ahead and link them in the description as well. And they do a ton of awesome stuff to these trucks. Those trucks can easily get up to $250,000. So big, big range for these vehicles. We're not sure exactly what we're gonna list this vehicle for, but we're thinking it's gonna be around 85 to $90,000, okay? Now, this has the 6.5 liter V8 diesel turbo motor. So this is definitely going to be the best power plant that they produced for the Hummer if you don't go ahead and get a Duramax LBZ swap, all right? So basically, this has around 200 horsepower stock and 440 foot-pounds of torque stock. Now, this has a Predator tune on it, so it actually makes about 300 horsepower and 580 foot-pounds of torque. Now, by any means, it's not a fast vehicle, and we're gonna do a point of view drive here in a little bit so you can get an idea of how it performs, but a stock one of these will do zero to 60 in about 16 seconds. So definitely not gonna win any speed awards, but I gotta say, driving this thing is an experience all to itself, so it is what it is. Now, in 1996, they also did a number of other upgrades on this vehicle. Uh, so, you know, they did leather interior. This has power windows, power doors. Everything works as far as I can tell. It also has an upgraded sound system, two 10 inch uh, subwoofers in the back, Alpine speakers, new, you know, Bluetooth enabled uh, system. So pretty darn cool. You know, the first thing that I always hear from people when I say, hey, you know, I'm doing a Hummer review or I got a Hummer in inventory right now, they always say immediately, oh my God, that thing must get atrocious fuel economy. Cause that's kind of what they were known for, right? They were the de facto like, hey, this is, this is overconsumption in the nineties. And in fact, they even had people burning these down, the H2s, especially at dealerships when they were brand new. Uh, so it was definitely an issue back then. You know, now these are so collectible um, and you're not gonna daily drive this vehicle. I wouldn't worry too much about it, but I do want to say it has about a 40 gallon tank between the regular one and then the reserve one here. And I will also say that it gets fairly good fuel economy. It's not as bad as you think. Uh, if you baby this thing, you could probably get around 13 to 14 miles a gallon. If you're on it, you're on the highway and you're going fast, you're probably going to burn around 10 miles a gallon. So this thing, you know, can go a pretty, pretty good range. And I just wanted to make sure it, it was mentioned. Now it is 7,090 pounds. <laughs> so it qualifies for a section 179 tax exemption. So you can actually write the entire vehicle off for your business. Uh, so you can save on taxes. That's one of the perks of it for sure. 
And let's go through some of the specifics of this vehicle just so I can give you some comfort on it. Now, I've reviewed another Hummer back in the day and that had the 6.5 liter engine. It wasn't the turbo and it was way too slow and they wanted too much money for it. Uh, I gotta say, this one is probably a, a much, much better bet because it's had a lot of upgrades to it, right? So it's had a suspension lift, it's had new suspension, it has a new Monster Performance transmission, has a Predator ECU, uh, it's got basically a new AC unit, new suspension, new engine components, it's got the Alpine speaker system, uh, it's got the factory brush guard. I actually left this on and I left the rear one on. Now, when we purchased the vehicle uh, from the other owner, uh, he actually had it removed because it has a lot of rust on it. Now, if you want, we can send this to Hubcap Heaven in Nashville and they're powder coated and be $300 for the front and the rear. So we can easily fix this for you. Uh, but I left it on here because I wanted you to see, you know, this is still a 25 year old vehicle. But if you look underneath this vehicle, guys, you're gonna see hardly any rust. It's, it's really something. And while I'm down here, I also wanted to point out, you know, the Hummer is just an incredible design. Like the actual disc brakes are right here. So there's one over here and one over here. So that's actually where, how, what stops the vehicle. They're not physically located by the wheels. And that's part of its, you know, incredible off-road performance. You know, basically this thing can, can ford 30 inches of water. It can climb a 22 inch steep and it has a stock ground clearance of 16 inches. Now this particular one actually has a better ground clearance than that with the wheels and tires and the upgraded lift. So definitely um, had a lot of work done uh, to this car. And some of the things on the exterior, you can see it has the light bar. This, these are also the Predator aftermarket um, you know, mirrors that it has installed. These are Nitto uh, Grappler tires. Uh, I'd say these things are running about $500 a, a piece right now, uh, plus the 22 inch wheels. So definitely got, had a lot of work done. This also has a four inch aftermarket exhaust on it. Sounds pretty darn good, I gotta say. Uh, so overall, this truck has had a lot of work done. Um, and you have to keep that in mind because I would not buy one of these vehicles that frankly has just been sitting there for 25 years because they're gonna be a money pit. This one, once it warms up, it fires up, it's fun to drive, it sounds incredible. It's only got 79,000 miles on it. Now, having said that, you're probably still gonna wanna develop a relationship with a decent mechanic, right? Because it's still a 25-year-old vehicle. These trucks, though, is because they become so collectible, companies like Predator, like I mentioned earlier, you can go on their website and you could literally buy a brand new brush guard. Let's say you don't want a powder coat. You can buy a brand new brush guard. You could buy a brand new rear guard. You could literally take the entire engine and transmission and swap it with one of the new ones. And you could have a 900 horsepower, you know, not 900 horsepower, but a 900 foot pounds of torque monster that can actually do zero to 60 in like six, seven seconds. It's pretty incredible what they're able to do with these vehicles. One thing I do want to mention while I'm sitting up, here, up front here, you see this right here and this right here, <laughs> you could drop these from airplanes. Yeah, they're, it's pretty incredible. I mean, this is, this is literally a military spec vehicle that they released to civilians. It's just, it's just so cool. And I also want to note that they ended production of the Hummer, specifically the H1, in 2006, and they went out with a version called the Alpha. Now, the Alpha is pretty much, I would say, as far as holding value, better than almost any vehicle out there. Uh, they were sold at an MSRP price of $140,000 for the wagon. And uh, I, I gotta say, I mean, they're still going for $120,000 to $200,000 for a nice low mileage H1 wagon. So uh, just keep that in mind. I mean, with the new Duramax engines, the LBZ engines, with the Allison transmissions, the tunability, the fuel economy, the performance, the sound, it's a significantly better platform, uh, much easier to daily drive. And that's the reason why they're very, very desirable. Uh, having said that, you could take all that this truck has, right? Has an aftermarket paint job here. This is called Proud Navy Blue. You could take the suspension, the wheels, right? The really good interior condition of the vehicle. And then you could swap it with the uh, Duramax and the Allison engine. And you know, you're gonna have a great truck for many, many years to come. Gets good fuel economy, good performance. Now, having said that, if you happen to keep this engine in it, 
you know, it's still a diesel engine. I mean, it's going to run for many, many years. It might have some issues here or there. You might have to change some of the pumps from time to time, but overall, they're not the most unreliable vehicle. If you actually dig into the online forums and whatnot, a lot of guys, you know, they are able to drive these things consistently and they're not necessarily bad money pits. Now coming on to the inside, you can see here that the Proud Navy Blue, the original color of the vehicle was tan, right? So they, they had like five or six different colors, I believe. Uh, so you can see that the paint, you know, like if you were like, you could easily come in here and actually add paint here, but the previous owner left it. Overall, the paint job is really sharp. It's in good condition. It's kind of got a nice little texture to it. It's not quite Kevlar paint, but it does feel good. It feels high quality. It matches the character of the vehicle. Now on the inside here, I mean, it's just such a really crazy design. Anybody who comes and sits in this vehicle is just gonna comment like, oh my God, there's so much space, it's so weird. It's just different. I mean, it, it literally looks like a military vehicle. This one does have an aftermarket BOMO steering wheel. It has an aftermarket Alpine, or excuse me, Pioneer head unit. It's got aftermarket, you know, speakers. And uh, it's got everything else works. Like if you wanna lower, if you wanna lower the, you know, the windows, if you wanna lock the doors, everything's power. You do have leather seats. Obviously they're a little bit worn for a 25 year old vehicle. But I gotta say, they look in pretty good shape considering it's a 25 year old vehicle. Now coming into the rear here, you have a lot of storage. If you do wanna open it up, it's pretty easy. You pull this clip, this pops open, and then you have a nice wagon back here, right? As you'll see in some of the B-roll. And this also is where the subs are. So plenty of storage in the back here. All right, guys, before I take you on the point of view drive, I just kind of want to show. Now, I want to shut up for a second. You hear this? That's a clock. So this has a clock that's uh, that'll be going in the vehicle. You have your RPM gauge here. You have your fuel gauge here. You have your temperature gauge here. Your miles are here. This is also, of course, your speedometer. Pounds. Uh, this is your oil pressure, your battery voltage. You control the lights. These are like all the exterior lights, your panel lights, your cargo lights, the windshield wipers. Uh, you know, your, your turn signals are right here. This has the aftermarket steering wheel. This has the Alpine unit. And I'll go ahead and do a cold start real quick. Actually, before I do it, because it's loud, I do want to point out a few more things. You have some cup holders here. This is where you can keep a pistol. Uh, right here is where you have your AC controls. The AC does work, blows hot and cold. And of course you have plenty of storage right here uh, to put all of your magazines and your weapons and all the fun stuff. All of your power windows are right here. This is your uh, differential and this is your parking brake. So in order to start this vehicle up, what you wanna do, I showed it earlier I think, but I don't know if I'm gonna use that clip. So you put it in here. Turn it on, you wait for this to stop saying wait. That's the glow plugs warming up. Uh, the engine's pretty warm right now, so we should be okay to just go ahead and crank it. And there you go. This head unit will pop on. Uh, I, I, it works pretty darn well with Bluetooth once you know the, the right combination. You've also got a cable here that'll plug into. So, you know, the sound system in this car really does bump. It's a lot of fun, adds a lot of fun character to the car. In order to put the, uh, the vehicle into drive, Put your foot on the brake, take your parking brake all the way off by pushing it forward, and then from there, you just push this button in and then it's drive. It's just that simple. Now, as you can see, you've, you've got a really good, you know, bird's eye look here of the world, and there's a ton of room between you and your passengers, uh, so that is something to be mindful of. Putting the car, the truck in drive here, definitely sounds like a, you know, diesel truck. The brakes on it, you know, they work, but you definitely have to make sure that they're warmed up. And, you know, you want to make sure that you give yourself plenty of space if you're coming up to a stoplight, because it is still a 7,000 pound vehicle. And she'll roll and coast with the best of them. Uh, remember, this thing doesn't have a lot of horsepower, it has a lot of torque. Uh, so it, it definitely gets up and goes uh, from a straight line you know, from a dig essentially. But as far as horsepower goes, when you're already rolling, it doesn't have a lot of power, but it'll definitely jump off the line. So if you're at a stoplight, you could definitely pull out in front of people, no problem with this vehicle. You know, it's not the loudest truck in the world, but it's up there. Um, I wouldn't, you know, you don't have to wear earplugs or anything crazy like that. 
and frankly it has a really cool sound if you if you lower the window okay you'll hear a little bit of turbo spool you know so it, it has kind of a, a, a cool you know truck like you hear that so you know it's got a cool a uh, vibe to it driving it. I mean, it, it just it's a Hummer, right? It, it is what it is. It's its own thing Now you can hear the four-speed transmission shifting It's pretty darn smooth So I believe that's third gear right there There you go. Well, coming on to the open road here, you can see your RPMs. They never really get above 3,000. Let me shut the window here so it's a little quieter. And it's not hard with this particular truck to get up to 40 miles an hour, right? It's a lot faster than a stock one because it has the tune on it. You can also hear the tires, right? They are very, very off-road tires, so they do have a little bit of a sound to them. But you see, we're doing 45 miles an hour and it's comfortable. It's easy to drive. You know, there's a lot of give in the steering wheel. But it's just a good time. I mean, you know, in fourth gear, you're cruising at less than 2,000 RPMs, as you can see. And it's easy. You know, you could easily get this truck. They say the top speed is 83 miles an hour. Um, you're going to have to pretty much have your foot to the floor to get it to 83 miles an hour. But uh, it'll absolutely drive, as you can see here, quite quite nice and quite easily in uh, 40 to 50 miles an hour. It's pretty quiet. If you have the sound system going in here, you know, nice summer day. You got the uh, the sound system bumping. You got the windows down. It's fun. It's a fun time. It really is. It's uh, it's definitely not the uh, the most uncomfortable vehicle to drive. Would I want to daily drive this? No. I wouldn't. This is this is a vehicle that, you know, the conditions are right, and I want to take it to the car show, or I want to take it to the gun range, and that's what I'm doing, right? And uh, it's maybe the third or fourth or fifth vehicle in the fleet, and so this is why you're going to have a Hummer H1. I will say this truck gets an enormous amount of attention when you are driving it on the road. Uh, it's, it's pretty funny. It's like, you know, I would say you'd have to have a Lamborghini Aventador, uh, to get about as much attention as this truck's going to get you on the street. Probably a lot of haters too, but also just a lot of people that, frankly, they don't see a lot of H1s anymore. So they are very rare and, uh, you know, I think pretty cool and desirable. But uh, I am a car guy, so I'm biased on that part. But as you can see here, you know, we're cruising no problem. And, uh, you know, I'll go ahead and give it full throttle here in a second so you can see it. All right, guys, here's full throttle. You ready? Thirty, forty. So you know it's not the fastest vehicle on the planet. I will say that, <laughs> but it's not slow. You know when you're driving it around town, you can get you can get around no problem. Uh, it's it's not uh, you know it, it, it's definitely doable. Uh, so it's it's a lot better with the turbo and with the tune. Let me tell you that right now. If you buy one of these, like if you get the V8 gas motors. Yeah, I would say forget about it. Like that's that's probably not the best bet, no doubt about it. I will also say the turning radius is good, but you know, with these big knobby tires and everything, you know, you're probably gonna want to do more three-point turns. And also keep in mind when you drive in this vehicle, it's four-wheel drive all the time. So you really do feel the transfer case and you know you just you just feel the vehicle. Uh, you know, as far as making tight turns, because it is four-wheel drive all the time. I mean, there you go, and you're going 40 miles an hour, which I probably, if I if I kept this truck, I wouldn't go ahead and do a lot of, you know, highway driving with it, but I would definitely enjoy it around town. Well, if you made it this far into the video, I really appreciate you all watching. Please like and subscribe. Brian and I love producing uh, car content and truck content. And, you know, I hope you enjoyed the point of view drive. You can actually hear me through the microphone with the big diesel engine and the turbo spool and all that. Um, but I gotta say, just to add a conclusion on this, uh, this truck here, look, 
These things have their place in American history, period. They're always going to be cool, okay? They're cool for four-year-olds. They're cool for older adults, right? You have the pedigree of guys like Arnold Schwarzenegger that went crazy for them. And they're coming out with the new electric EVs right now, right? Hummer is releasing those this year, they say, and next year. And they're going to become, hopefully, fairly popular. And they're like $120,000 for those. So as we head into an EV world, you know, you have to think about the collectability of something like this with a big old diesel engine and the original. Um, I don't think you're going to lose a ton of money on it. I really don't. Um, if, if you were to buy this truck. Uh, if anything, I bet you it keeps place with inflation and just keeps going up because frankly, you can't find them in working condition. And uh, this one is is a good one. Uh, so we really think that if you do take uh, if you love the truck, if you love the pedigree, if you love, you know, actually using it for what it was designed to do, which is go anywhere off road, tow things when needed and just generally be the coolest, most badass truck on the planet. then I think this one's going to treat you right. I really do. If you have any questions about the vehicle or I said something wrong, I said a lot, of, I know I did. So, uh, you know, feel free to call me out in the comments, build our community up so we can help each other. And uh, that's about it for us today, guys. The next shot will be a drone flyaway. And uh, we really appreciate you watching. My name's Adam again. I'll talk to you on the next one.